Welcome to the homestead. If you are new around here, my name is Sage and I'm going to show you around the homestead today. I have been here for a year now. I moved in February 2022 from Colorado to North Carolina. So I am on three acres just a little bit north of Asheville. I want to show you everything that I've done in that time and everything that I'm still working on for this upcoming season. First off, when I got here, all of this was woods. Um, actually, even just only a few months ago, all of this was still wooded. Uh, I've been working on clearing some of the flatter portions here for pasture because even though I'm on three acres, almost half of that or a little bit over half of that is just trees. And so I would like to make that into a little bit more usable of a space for me to run more animals on, but we'll talk about that later. So I'm working on clearing, I don't know, about half an acre of what is back here. It's a lot of tulip poplars. It's a lot of things that have been cut and harvested before. So I'm not cutting down any old growth forest. But yeah, I'm going to try to turn all of this into lush green grass. I do still have my work cut out for me back here. Uh, there's a ton of brush. There are some lingering trees that need to come down. Uh, and... <laughs> I need to seed this probably in like the next two weeks <laughs> for it to be successful so we'll see how that goes but also that's just kind of been the whole vibe of this first year here is all the deadlines and missing some <laughs> and almost missing pretty much every other one so it's at least in line with how everything's been going and my pasture is currently littered with scraps of wood so this stuff I'll chop up and burn and then some of the nicer logs I can actually turn into mushroom logs or I can cut these up and save them for next year and hopefully by next winter I will actually have a wood burning stove in my house so that the wood that I cut down on my property can actually go towards heating my house but we'll see it is still pretty cold right now so I don't have many animals around. Uh, right now I just have my egg laying chickens. I don't have any meat birds. Uh, I just recently actually harvested five turkeys about two weeks ago. Um, so yeah, right now it's just the, the egg laying chickens. So there's a flock up here in the pasture that since the grass is so wonderful and lush, I have actually moved onto the grass sooner than I thought I would, which is a lovely surprise. And there's also a small flock that I keep down by the house. Uh, and the only reason that they're separate actually is because all of these egg layers up here I got as chicks in the spring last year and the ones down by the house I bought as adults who were already laying uh, when I first moved in about a year ago. I did actually keep a couple turkeys that I did not harvest to hopefully breed. We'll see how that works out. I was actually hoping to keep a second turkey female to have a breeding trio uh, and I had one but she got out of the electric net like three weeks ago and got got by a predator. So it's just the two of them for now. We'll see how that works out. If for too much trouble I might just end up selling them. 
I have 16 total egg layers up here in this flock and I usually get about a dozen eggs from them a day and that's pretty normal for chicks who are in their first year. They'll be more productive the younger they are and then slowly taper off as they get older. But it's been great. They've laid straight through the winter and I've been really happy with that. I obviously can't eat that many eggs in a day so I have started uh, selling eggs at the end of my driveway. I just keep a cooler down by the road and I let people do self-service really on our system and I really like it. All right, the other main feature of the homestead is the garden. So when I got here, this was completely bare. This was used as a sacrifice paddock for horses, which just means this where they keep them in the winter when they can't be on the pasture. Uh, so really compacted soil, not, not a great idea for a garden in general, but I didn't want to rip up the pasture, which I needed anyway to run chickens on uh, for the sake of a garden. So I decided that I would just roll with it and let me show you what I got. It is cold, so there's not much in here right now, and what is in here is covered. But I'll go through each one of these tunnels and show you what's underneath. This first tunnel is mostly lettuces. There's some older ones, there's some baby ones you can barely see, uh, and then at the very end there is some <laughs> radish and arugula that has bolted. There were some potatoes in here as well, but they did get nipped by the uh, cold weather we had, so they are not doing so hot. This second tunnel used to be brassicas and there are some tiny little remnants of some survivors. I had this whole row planted out and one day the cover blew off and the chickens got to it when they were free ranging. And that was the end of that story. So I have more brassica starts inside. We'll see if I can get them out here and they can mature before the weather gets really warm. And in this last one, we have a bunch of kale. There's some spinach up here. And at the very front, there is some cauliflower, the only surviving brassica from the chicken massacre. These low tunnels were a total experiment for me. So right now, they are just covered with agrabon, which is not very much of a protectant, uh, but it keeps insects out. It actually keeps deer and rabbits out and chickens. <laughs> Uh, it does have a little bit of a frost protection, but but not much. Um, and then on the side, I also have some greenhouse plastic. It's not it's not covering right now because it's actually a nice balmy 50, which is different from the 16 that we've had recently. Uh, so I'm not done with the greenhouse plastic with the heavier duty uh, cold protection. So they're just sitting there for now, um, and I'm holding it all all down with just rocks that I found lying around. Gardening this winter has mostly been uh, just a series of planting different things and watching them freeze. <laughs> so I know that if I want to try to garden over the winter next year, I will either have to invest in more material, I can double up the uh, greenhouse plastic for more protection, or I can just not try to garden between December and March, which honestly, uh, is probably the intelligent choice, but we'll see how restless I get. I'm also growing some soft neck and hard neck garlics both up here and back there. These don't need a cover, they're supposed to be exposed to the cold and, and they'll be just fine. As far as the gardening methodology, uh, I'm not very fond of tilling, even though this ground is so compacted. Uh, I am just going at it with a broad fork. I'm going at it with adding organic material. I'm going at it with ground cover. So for a portion of time, the chickens were here and the turkeys were here. Uh, so put a bunch of leaves down for the chickens and kept the turkeys area covered with wood chips. Uh, I have a free source for wood chips in Asheville, but it's kind of a pain <laughs> to find the time to go load them into my car and bring them here. So we'll see if I, if I continue to do the wood chips or if I just opt for leaves, which are very easy to find around the neighborhoods and very easy to steal for a great purpose. But even with the non-ideal conditions in here, I was pleasantly surprised how much I was able to harvest from the garden last year. Um, I had squash, tomatoes, green beans, okra, corn, uh, cucumbers, all the goodies. Uh, and I got a decent harvest. I really didn't have that many soil issues. Uh, it was mostly just pest issues. The squash got totally eaten up by pests. Um, the tomatoes 
got blight at the end, admittedly, but that's probably my negligence from planting them too close, so I can't really fault the garden for that. But I'm really excited to see with all of the effort that's gone into this in the last year, what it will do this season. And this 10 foot tall deer fence is a new addition. I had so many issues with the deer breaking into the garden and eating my food, especially green beans. They just mowed down the green beans. I, I barely got any beans last year. Uh, they even got so hungry that they started eating my squash and my pumpkins, which is not something they usually go for. So my dad and my uncle are amazing and they helped they didn't help, they did. <laughs> they installed this 10 foot deer fence. So it's a plastic fencing, uh, which is a temporary fencing with 10 foot T posts and um, some locust posts that we harvested from the land. If you're not familiar with locust trees, they are highly resistant to rotting. So these tree posts that are just stuck in the ground uh, will outlive this plastic netting for sure. The netting itself is only eight feet tall, and even though the T-post is a 10-foot T-post, two feet are in the ground. So to make it 10 feet, we added a couple lines of wire across the top. And the top doesn't have to be as sturdy as the bottom. Uh, they just have to see that it's that high, and that will deter them from trying to jump. Uh, and this is just old electric fencing line, uh, poly line, that I harvested from around the property because they had horses here, so they did have a perimeter fence. It wasn't in great condition, uh, and so I'm working on redoing it, which is one of the million projects that needs to get done uh, before spring really hits. But you can kind of see it in the background there. I have ordered some line from Premier One, and I'm working on redoing all of that. Um, I'm very grateful that they already have T-posts installed so that it makes it a little bit easier for me. And I actually have a new animal edition that I haven't told any of you about. <laughs> uh, it's been a couple months now too, and I haven't spoken on it, so let me show you. I have added a top bar hive to the homestead. Funny story, actually. <laughs> when I found that, I found just the hive on Craigslist, and I thought I wasn't buying bees. I thought I just found a great deal on a top bar hive and I didn't have to figure out how to go build a top bar hive. So I was like, sweet, yes. Uh, putting in the back of my car, <laughs> started to take the frames apart to store them so they wouldn't get uh, infested with wax moths and found bees. So I unloaded that and actually ended up flipping the hive over. It was a whole big deal. Uh, fell on top of my phone actually, which was just lovely. Uh, but my neighbor helped me get it off my phone and then another friend helped me get it right side up and where it was supposed to go. So there are actually bees in there. I saw them the other day uh, when it was 60 or so they were flying around and so we'll see how that goes. I was actually trying to be rational with the bees. I was trying to do it slowly, <laughs> not jump into it like I sometimes do with projects. And the universe decided that that was not the way to go and that I was just gonna jump into it. So I'm gonna embrace it. And over here, I am not just collecting tarps. I am actually working on killing the grass on the side over here so that I can plant wheat from all the way from the garden down here. That's a project I started last year and quickly abandoned in the middle of spring, summer when everything else was happening. Uh, and I was trying to pickaxe this grass that's been here for who knows how long uh, and just was not coming out. So I'm, <laughs> I'm tarping it um, and I'm gonna see if, if I can actually get some wheat planted this summer. No promises, but I'm gonna try. And also, a project that I'm working on is getting some sheep. I would love to have some sheep for dairy. Uh, I don't really want to get a cow. For one, cows are kind of intimidating. That might seem weird, but they're just big and I've never been around them. Uh, sheep seem more manageable. So I got on a wait list for some dairy ewe sheep and we'll see how that pans out. Now, as far as the one year updates that I can't exactly show you. Uh, I 
raised I think about 75 meat birds here and harvested them here obviously with lots of help and I'm very grateful for everyone who helped me do that um, I raised Red Rangers last year and I think I won't be doing that this year actually I know I won't be doing that this year because I've already uh, ordered my chickens this year instead of doing Red Rangers for one I'm gonna raise fewer chickens uh, I think I'm just gonna aim for 60 this year and share those um, because I still have a ton of extra from this year I'm actually going to be doing Cornish not Cornish cross but Cornish hens which in theory should be a little bit faster than the Red Rangers were just because they took a little bit too much time and hopefully that means they will be a little bit cheaper but we will see I also did harvest five turkeys again with a lot of help <laughs> thank you friends uh, harvested five turkeys and put those in the freezer so it was obviously not in time for Thanksgiving because I harvested them two weeks ago uh, but I will have one in the freezer for this Thanksgiving and I don't think I'm gonna do turkeys this year I think that might be an every other year event but uh, we'll see if I end up getting some fertile hatching eggs from the turkeys that I did save. Uh, maybe I'll get impulsive and buy an incubator and uh, hatch those out. That sounds like something I would do. Also, it might not look like much, but this slope behind me is all, I don't know, 20, 30 years of rotted horse manure. So this has been my free compost source to try to work on the soil quality in the garden, which is great, but I'm at the point now where I have to pull it from the bottom of the slope and wheelbarrow it all the way around and up to the top of the pasture because I can't pull from the top anymore. So uh, I get my cardio in, that's for sure. Not much has changed down here by the house. Really, the only thing is these tarps behind me uh, are covering some dahlias. So they were mulched and I tarped them for the winter. They grew beautiful last year. They are just not meant to perennialize in a place as cold as this. I think they need to be zoned like seven or eight, something like Florida, uh, in order to come back reliably. But I have accidentally perennialized dahlias before, so I thought that I would just give it a shot, protect them, see what happens, and uh, one of my <clears throat> completely unrealistic goals for this year is to turn basically my front yard into a flower garden. Uh, originally I was thinking like cottage garden, but I think that'll take too much thought and effort, so I might just take the broad fork put some rows in here uh, and just do more of a market garden setup for for flowers again we'll we'll see what happens I haven't done anything with this old chicken coop or this old I don't know what this is uh, pig house smoke house no idea ultimately I think I will just tear those down see if I can salvage some materials they do have metal roofs which I can try to use somewhere else. Just salvage the materials and use that space, probably to grow something. It would be a decent place, I think, to plant some fruit trees, so that's a thought, but who knows. <laughs> I have also done absolutely nothing with this old horse corral except for set some wood out here to dry. I've had a couple different thoughts for this space. Uh, for one, it's kind of at a low point on my property and it's right where a bunch of water drains from the pasture up there and sort of from over the house. So if I really wanted to, I could make it into a pond, but I don't really know if I wanna do that because I think it might just attract a whole bunch of snakes. So the other thing that it would be really good for is a greenhouse. Uh, it's all completely leveled because it used to be a corral. Uh, the soil in here is actually pretty gravelly. It would be decent for uh, the floor of a greenhouse. So not that I have the dispensable income to make that happen right now, but I enjoy thinking about it. Overall, I think the first year here went exponentially better than I could have anticipated. Um, going into this, I definitely thought that I would have lost more animals to predators, um, which fortunately I lost very few. 
Uh, I kind of expected just more unknown things to go wrong. And not to say that I had <laughs> an easy breezy time of it, but things actually went pretty smoothly. And so last year was definitely about getting the chickens going because those are the gateway homesteading animals. Uh, getting the garden going because that is really a centerpiece of the homestead to me. Um, improving the pasture quality with running the chickens on it rotationally. Uh, and I noticed a huge difference. When I first got here, the pasture was really just, the grass wasn't growing all that well in some areas. Um, there was moss growing places and just based on the different weeds that were growing in it, you could tell that it just wasn't very happy. And with how quickly it greened up this year, which is partially due to the weird spring that we're having, um, but also just the extra nutrients, I am so happy with that. And all of the effort from last year is now allowing me to think about what I want to do this year. With the pasture being a little bit happier in better shape, I can start thinking about adding ruminants like those lambs that I will hopefully get. Um, start thinking about adding other fun animals like the bees. Uh, that's one hive, but I certainly don't intend to stop with only that one. I would love to add two or three more over the next couple years. I think that would be really fun. And I've gotten a better feel for the growing season here. Uh, I started a garden, uh, bought seeds without ever having grown anything in this region before. So I've gardened in Georgia, I've gardened in Colorado, but I've never gardened uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. And actually it's much colder here where I am than it is in Asheville. Uh, so even that's different. It can be hard to find information, things like the last frost date, the first frost date, um, the average coldest temperature here. It can, be, it can be hard to find that information because it's kind of a small town. <laughs> so going into the next growing season, I have a pretty good idea of when I can plant out everything that's not frost hardy. I have a pretty good idea of when I need to pull out my spring veggies. Um, I have a pretty good idea of my pest situation and just overall what I'm going to contend with. Um, so I'm excited to see what the garden can do this year now that I'm better equipped. If you guys have any questions about things that I've shown you or maybe things that I didn't show you, uh, please feel free to leave them down below. I love answering your questions. I love engaging with you guys. Uh, and I love just sharing this because for so long it was this elusive thing that was maybe in my future, but that I had to live vicariously through other people to do, which I'm sure a lot of you can, uh, can relate to that. So it feels good to be here and it feels good to let you all in on it. But you guys have got to stop telling me to get pigs and to get goats because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I will not break down. It's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.